Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. My name is Suni and I'm the maker behind Ethan Knits here on YouTube, also available on Instagram and Ravelry with the same username. So it has been a little bit longer than I expected before filming this, but that's because um, I wasn't really feeling up to it and also timing didn't really work out to film anything. But I am here today and we'll have this up soon to show you a decent amount of stuff that I've been working on in the past how many weeks it's been. And as usual, everything that I talk about will be linked down below, so that will mention the designer who made the pattern, my Ravelry project page for it, and anything else I think may be relevant, and um, any modifications that I talk about should be listed in the Ravelry project page, but if you can't access it or if you want to ask anything else, um, you can always feel free to either comment it down below or DM me on Instagram, and I will be happy to help you out. And I think that is about it. We will go ahead and get started. I'm not wearing anything today, so we will jump into finished objects, and I believe I have like one and a half to show. So first one is something that I mentioned last, last episode, I think. Um, this is the vest I'm going to be giving to my sister for her birthday. Um, I didn't use the pattern for this, I kind of freehanded it based off a vest that she already owns that she likes the shape and fit of, um, and just kind of kept- I made a gaze swatch. It did take some like frogging because I think something was off with my tension between making the gauge swatch and then I walked it flat so between that and making the back panel the front panel something got a little weird but I was able to frog it and fix it and it all turned out okay I think so it's just a simple v-neck vest with a color work here and this was her design that she helped make in I think it's stitch fiddle um but so it's a little crab holding a lemon and a knife <laughs> um all hers and yeah so I did mainly what is it fair isle knitting for this I did like I mentioned work it flat so I did the back panel first to help kind of like figure out the numbers before I had to worry about the color work um, and then the front panel and yeah not a whole lot to say I think I honestly could have used I made a v-neck vest before with Things called the Audrey vest by Drops, um, but just because I really wanted to make sure that it fit exactly as she wanted it to and based off of the vest that she already had, um, for some reason I thought it'd be easier to make the vest myself um, without a pattern. I'm not sure if that actually was the smartest thing to do, but I think honestly it turned out pretty well. Um, I am very kind of like pat myself on the back for it. Of while there was some hiccups with like having to frog the beginning because I worked bottom up um, to make sure that everything like really lined up the way it was supposed to, I didn't have to frog that much and especially for picking up stitches around the like armhole and for the collar, it is a little bit tight there but that's okay, I think it'll loosen up a little bit. Um, and doing the decreases, like you can see decreases here, and also even along this for the actual v-neck part I didn't really have to undo it like at all I think maybe I could have and it would have been a little bit neater but like it's it's fine and it fits fine um because we have like very very similar if not the same um like body dimensions fit we have the same I don't know anyway so I, I tried on and it fits okay on me so it should be good on her <laughs> but if not I can always go back and adjust it and it should loosen up a little bit as it gets washed. Um, oh, forgot to mention, um, the yarn I used is Quince and Co. Rimvol, and then, oh, that's for the blue and the orange. And then the other ones are all scrap yarn. I think they're all like 100% acrylic. But the blue is in the color Starboard, and then the orange is, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Rum, Rum, Rum. But that is my finished object. That. I finished, I guess, most recently. Kind of. I don't know. Um, so yeah. I'll be giving to her that. I will be giving this to her shortly when we sell it. And next up for kind of finished, um, basically finished but not quite at the level I'm going to be at. These are these frogs. <laughs> um, you can see the little eyes. It's my first time using safety eyes. Up until now, I've just kind of been doing like a crochet, very small crochet circle and sewing them on. But I really wanted eyes for these and I wanted to initially do those like, um, they're these really cute 
eyes with like a fancy color and then like a very narrow uh, pupil to look more like frog like but I don't think they're going to come in time so I ended up getting a like big pack unfortunately off of Amazon but like it is a little bit of a time sensitive project because I'm trying to be selling these and there's a deadline for that but so yes these frogs are done but I will be hoping to give them some clothes um, I'm not sure what exactly maybe like overalls for one and then like a little either turtleneck I'm not sure if I can do pants because of their body shape I think that could be a little tricky but it's very cute I use scrap yarn for both I'm pretty sure they're both actually I think the green is oh, recycled polyester it's leftover that I had from a spider project um, and then the white and yellow are both definitely scrap yarn and I did so I stuffed them with you know polyester polyfill have the safety eyes and also have a like one of those here let me show like this wire thing that my sister has she let me use um it's like a twisty ties um but so the inside the each of the legs and arms do they still count as arms or their legs um but yeah so that way i can bend them and they stay in shape so it's very cute and i am quite proud of them and i think they're so so fun to have and i've seen some people um kind of like have them as like bag charms by doing that around the strap of a bag which is so like it's so darling but um as much as i love these guys and as much as the pattern is pretty straightforward and like it does work up pretty quickly because it is such a small project um each little hand alone because it has three little fingers i guess and the way that it's worked there's at least what six um ends to weave in with one limb and that's not including anything to do with like the rest of the body so it takes it takes actual dedication and like real motivation to actually get it done but they're so cute so and now for works in progress i have a lot of stuff that i've been working on that I had been hold on for a while and they're like decently big projects but i'm finally able to start getting like more stuff done with them which is very exciting so first up is the doodle maggi so i don't know if you can tell compared to the last time i showed this which was i think a decent while ago i was definitely at the body back then but i don't think it was this far down i think it was maybe like here ish so i have a decent amount added um, and I should be finishing up hopefully soon. There's not much left before the bottom is done and I can pick up the sleeves and then add the kind of like neckline detail. But so this is a design by Sedna Yang. Sedna Yang? Um, depends on American or Korean pronunciation, but I test knit the coat version of this, the Durumagi coat. Um, I think earlier this year, January, February. Um, February? March? I'm not sure, but definitely earlier this year. And that is basically a similar kind of style of like the hanbok um, with the color like that and the overlap. Um, it's a little difficult for me to describe, but that one is thicker yarn and it doesn't have this kind of like, I guess, lace ribbing sort of. And that one also has pockets. So this one is a little bit of a lighter version. It would be nice if springs were a little bit cooler in my area so I could wear it but I think I'll have to wait until fall. So I tested it the English version of the coat pattern but this is just just for me not testing it which is why it's taking forever and it will continue to take a very long time until I'm done with it but I am definitely enjoying it and it's so pretty and the yarn I'm using is like the fanciest yarn I think I've used so far. It's by a Korean owned yarn maker, Yarn Dyer, which I think is just very cute that it's you know Korean project by Korean yarn made by Korean maker um all this stuff so it is I'm using Camellia Fiber Co's Sylvan DK base which is a 70% alpaca 20% silk and 10% cashmere and I think it's sport weight um so you can tell by the fiber content that it's like a very like fancy yarn um and I bought it a while ago for the intentions of making this I think was I I think it was um and it's just it's such a lovely blue and it's so soft and like it just feels like very high end so definitely happy with it excited to finish it and then wear it but this is also something that i'm surprisingly really enjoying the process of making even though it's knit up on pretty small needles um 3.75 so i guess not too bad but 
um, especially compared to the coat, which was, I think, on 5mm. Um, I actually really like working on this, although the yarn does shed a little bit. Um, I can't- I don't know if you can see the, like, slight halo it has. You can't really see, but, um, it kind of almost is like, if you were to hold a thing with a mohair, it has that sort of effect, but it's just- it's so pretty. It's okay that sheds a little bit. It's so worth it. And I'm making a size medium, or M for this. There are, let's see, six sizes, extra small to 2XL, and it is for a bust measurement of... 87 centimeters up to 160 and we'll hopefully finish it before the summer hits but we'll see and then another project that i have been working on for a while and will hopefully finish up soon this is my advent shawl so this is a very i guess i always feel kind of weird about calling it a free handed pattern because it's so basic and straightforward i'm using my goosey fibers 2022 um advent for this the Return to Pooh Corner, which is just so cute. It has a lot of these kind of like very, almost like moody colors, but also really bright vibrant ones. Like the blues are just like stunning with how bright and crisp they are. But they also have some like lovely, more like muted, look at that. It's so cool, so pretty. Um, yes, but so it was an entire adventure trying to make that. Um, I had finished I ended up only using 12 of the mini skeins instead of the 24 because I think it would have been way too huge for what I wanted um, if I used up 24, so I'm only doing 12, and then when I finish the day 12 mini skein, um, I realized that my two halves were not at all lined up size-wise, and I had like a huge gap left over, and I had used up all of day 12's yarn, so I guess my tension was weird. It's a three cord a three stitch I cord on either side and then increases all on one side and straighten the other and then after I reach I finish day six then I decreased instead of increasing um yeah and it just was not working so I fogged the entire half of it and then what I decided to do based off my sister giving me helpful advice after I was like in crisis mode um was just cast on again from the other side and then like increase it the same way so both sides are increasing and then I'll just attach them together. I'm not sure if I want to do like a sew them together somehow or if I want to maybe even kind of like slip stitch with crochet hook. I haven't decided but I'm almost at the point. Um, I'm just basically ca counting how many stitches I have on both. I have a, I have on the first side and then trying to reach that point or similar to it on the half that I'm currently working on and then when they have the same amount of stitches I can figure out how to attach them. But Hopefully that will be done soon. I initially thought, well, I started, what, mid, late December? And then that was also on hold for a while while I was working on other things. But now I'm back to it and I'm nearly done. It is honestly a fantastic project to work on for like movie watching specifically. Um, I think the only thing that could be better is just like pure stock in it in the round um, because you really don't have to look at it at all. But this, because it's garter stitch and there's only increase on one side, and especially after you get going, the increase side is very obvious, so you don't even need to like really look at it. You can just kind of feel, or even like if there's like a slight, even the slightest bit of light from anything, you can tell where the increase side is. I usually honestly got a lot of stuff done. Um, when I was watching anything, like any shows, any movies especially, um, I went to the theater with my sister to celebrate our birthday and we did like a little du double feature um so we watched Dungeons and Dragons and then John Wick 4 and I just bought this to work on and I got like I don't know that that much done close to it great project to work on in the dark so and you don't have to look at it all you can be distracted because it's just you're not doing any increases you're not doing any color work well besides the one part you're doing increases you're not doing anything fancy you can just kind of like knit away knit away um Another thing is when I did the first half of it, my tension was like absurdly tight. So that was also part of why I think I had issues with it not, not, not lining up correctly. So when I watch movies that there's a lot going on and I'm like anxious and tense, it works out. The tension is perfect. Um, watched The Last of Us when walking on that. It was amazing tension. I could not get any tighter. <laughs> I think those are the two main projects that have been on hold for a while and are finally getting to see the day of 
at the light of day again and will hopefully be done soon. Um, I think since my advent shawl is nearly done, I'm probably going to be focusing on that one a little bit more. And then after that, I'll try to go full energy for the durumaki. And then final work in progress doesn't look like a whole lot, but we'll hopefully be taking more shapes soon now that I'm starting to do the day faces. This is going to be a, another um, one of the kind of like, what is it? Charles Jeffrey, uh, the lover boy beanies, the ones that are with like the little cute uh, animal ear shapes. So I made a, I guess kind of like very dark gray black one a while ago and now I'm making a pink version, um, partly because I wanted a pink one because um, it's mainly inspired because Skids wore them at their, some of their concerts and you know, pink Dwicky if you know, you know. And also because I wanted to have a little bit more of an in-depth tutorial, I guess. It feels kind of weird calling it a tutorial, but that's what it is. Um, just because I posted a TikTok kind of showing like the process of and walking through the steps of how I made it. Um, and some people wanted a little bit more like in-depth, like step by step. So I wanted to, I didn't really have the footage, I think, to show it. I think I could have walked through the steps, but I think it really does help to see what's going on like see it being done not just talked about um so i'm trying to as best as i can film and talk about everything that i'm doing and why i'm doing it so that it'll be a little bit easier maybe for someone who is not as familiar with knitting and like beanie construction how to make it and if they want to change anything it should be a little bit easier to figure that out as well but yeah so i'm past the um brim section and now I'm working on the crown decreases so it should go a little bit by a little bit faster I just need to get the time or like I don't know I guess get on to actually doing it because I totally can and it's like easy um executive dysfunction you know how it is um but yes I am definitely very excited to be doing this and working on it and finishing it maybe we'll try to finish it before the end of the month we'll see I am using red heart super saver in the colorway light raspberry so it's just it's kind of just like a very bright pink it's showing up a little bit lighter on camera than it is in person i think but um just like a very saturated cute pink i don't know and i think it also would be kind of cute with the um my blonde hair i don't know but i'm excited to have it done and to finish it up so that's all for the projects i've been working on so far and next up is acquisitions because there was a local fiber festival last weekend and I went and I bought myself some treats kind of as like a birthday excuse and also supporting local businesses and like stuff like that. Um, anyways, I'll show you. So I bought, I bought three skeins, all of them from the same vendor, maker, there, I'm not sure, but um, so from Terrapin Fiber Works. They do some really great um, organic, organic based. The words are escaping me, but um, natural fibers, kind of like a lot of cotton blends, linen blends, um, all ethically sourced, ethically made, and or I think locally made especially too, um, and some like gorgeous colorways. And I think there's a collection pre-order going on right now. So if you're interested, there's some beautiful, beautiful colors, especially some like very like rich colors. Um, not necessarily always my thing but like it's just like objectively just like stunning anyways these are i got two of the same one and this is what is it garlic and the monica see fingering um but it's a cotton boucle and it's just it's so pretty oh getting washed out a little but um it's like this very subtle sort of like pastel um Erin, the dyer behind Terrapin Fiberworks, had a sample made and available in the boucle of a, I think it's an iris raglan, and it was just, it was so pretty and it was so squishy. The texture and the fabric that it made when it was worked up was just beautiful. I was originally planning on maybe getting some, like, tensile yarn, um, which has a really pretty shine to it, but I saw that sample and I, like, felt the texture of it, so I switched to the boucle instead. And I just love the garlic colorway. It's just so, so cute. And it's so, like, perfect for, um, 
warm weather, I think. Cause it's so like bright and like springy almost. But yes, very excited to be making something with this. I'm not sure what, probably some sort of t-shirt top, but pattern is right now not quite decided. And last thing I got was tinsel. It looks very similar kind of color tones, but it is different. Oh, look at that, look at the shine. Um, so this is Severin Fingering, which is 100% tinsel in Hate Street. That's the color name. And it's just, it's got this like beautiful different colors of like blue, pink, green, yellow. Um, when I first pulled it out of, it's this was one of the, I think like bargain skeins, cause it's like one of a kind stuff. Um, bunch of those when I pulled it out of the little bin my sister was like oh it looks like celestial and I was like oh, you're right and I had to get it not had to but it, it was very easy to um I guess come up with reasoning for why I should be allowed to get it so I really don't know what to be making with this I've never worked with tinsel before and I'm honestly not I don't have that much experience with making things in fingering weight but it's just so lovely, so gorgeous, and I oh, don't know what to make with it, but I'm so excited, and I just love it because it's so smooth. I'm just touching it, squeezing it. It's beautiful. And I love the glow, especially with this colorway. It really does just make it look so pretty. That is all for today. Um, actually, not a whole lot to share, even though it's been a while. And I don't really anticipate making a whole lot of progress of things in the future. More just finishing up the things I mentioned today that I'm currently working on. And maybe using up some yarn that I have in stash um, because I have plenty and I need to work through it and also reorganize it. So I hopefully should not be, I guess, starting a whole lot of new projects and especially not buying new yarn for it. But I'm also taking a break from test knitting. This is mainly because I want to kind of take it easy, take it chill. Um, it's been a little bit hard because there are a bunch of, well, not a bunch of, but there are definitely designers that I want to test for. But I'm holding myself back from applying because the um, main thing is I want to kind of work myself up to taking what I'm kind of calling my like craft sabbatical um, where I'm going to, it's one of, on my 2023 bingo, uh, bingo board things, is to take a month off of crafting entirely just to really give myself a break and I think kind of like recenter on what I really want to be making and spending my time with. And yeah, there's also, even though I like, I love knitting, I love crocheting, I love making stuff, um, that's not the only thing I really enjoy doing with my time, so I think it could be good to maybe also start working on some other hobbies, and then kind of like, once that's all established and those, like, good routines are made, then I can fill in the other excess time with knitting and crocheting, instead of spending, like, however many billion hours I do right now, uh, making stuff. But it's also mainly like focus on like my physical health and like taking keeping my hands and fingers a break, taking it easy, all that stuff. But yeah, all that to say that I will probably not be doing these like podcast episodes, video podcasts, um, for a little bit. I might still maybe do videos. If anything, I will be doing videos focused on a specific project, like I'm planning on doing, um, for the. Where is it? The Lucky Boy Beanie of going through step by step. I don't really anticipate showing or doing more like tutorial types, more just kind of showing the process of um, making something. But even that, not necessarily guaranteed. I might just kind of take a break. I think also the very frequent up, uh, like filming and uploading and all that, first of all, is kind of like a pain to edit because it takes like at least a few hours and trying to get all the pictures, put it in, cut everything. It's a little bit of a mess. Um, but also mainly because I think doing it so frequently really beyond just tying me out and being kind of like a little bit of a fatigue, um, I think it encourages too much of like constant making, 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 which isn't really what I want to be doing. And I want to be taking my time with the stuff that I'm making and really enjoying it and not, I guess it kind of, I feel like it's pushing, at least for me, pushing me too much towards like over consumerism of just like following trends and trying to make a bunch of things at once and I'm not really giving myself a break to really enjoy things and it feels like almost like wrong to film a podcast, film a video podcast, sorry, and not have a whole lot to show for it 
like I need to show a bunch of different projects, a bunch of new acquisitions, and obviously a lot of the flaws of that and that way of thinking is not necessarily um, attached directly to these kind of like knitting podcast vlogs themselves because I understand that that is not the case for a lot of people and sometimes it is a lot more of the slow process that they show in theirs. Uh, but for me and how I've been doing it, I feel like that's kind of the approach I've been taking and I want to kind of like cut down on that, make sure I'm not, you know, putting that kind of mentality on myself and especially for my making because that is the opposite of what I want. Um, but yes, very long ramble. Sorry if that was unintelligible. I hope you understood what I was trying to say. Um, I still love making. I'm going to keep making, but I'm also going to try and maybe take it easy and not let it, um, I guess, lead me down a very obsessive an unhealthy path if that makes sense that's all for today thank you for sticking around um or if you just skip to the end thank you for still watching the end um appreciate you and take care of yourselves and we'll see you whenever i see you bye bye <laughs>